Hi everyone, how are you doing? And uh, welcome to this uh, Zebo Mod 737 uh, live stream tutorial for the cold and dark uh, setup. Uh, thanks so much to everyone um, who's who's come along. Basically, um, for those of you that maybe first time watching this, so I used to sim way back when when I was younger, and kind of stopped when I got to yeah uh, sort of uni time, kind of stopped then. And um, just picked it up again uh, and uh, trying to have a go. So I'm going to be put through my paces now as a real 737 pilot. Um, can I actually get through and survive um, this whole uh, this whole simming thing? So the plan for today is uh, we're going to go through the platform that I have, which is X-Plane 11 with the Zebo mod. Um, and then uh, what else we're going to do? Uh, we'll look at the setup. Uh, preliminary setup. Uh, we'll then look at the uh, pre-flight, the briefing, um, pushing back engine start, and basically all the things that you kind of need to take care of. Can everyone hear me, by the way? Um, all right, is it coming through? All right. Um, if everyone's, if anyone's got any questions, and feel free to ask them as um, as we go along. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, the first one, guys, is uh, I'm sure you, you wouldn't, but this is obviously what I'm going to show you today is not to be used uh, for real life operations and does not replace official uh, flight documents. So please don't go and try and fly an actual airplane with what I've shown you today. Um, your normal procedures will always override uh, what we're going to talk about today. So yeah, please just um, stick to those. Um, for those of you uh, who are here for the first time, so I've got a blog, flight training blog, kcdopilot.com, all in the description. Please go over there, check it out if any of you are interested in becoming a pilot. And um, yeah, just uh, please ask away with as many questions as you can uh, with what you've got. So we are presently in uh, Manchester Airport. Um, uh, just parked stand 53. Um, I haven't got any add-ons just yet, but as you can see, there's an old Alitalia MD-80 uh, just over there and a noisy ground power unit uh, as well. Um, yeah, so, and even Air Berlin, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, yeah, so yeah, um, please uh, please ask away, guys. Um, so we'll get straight into it then. So for the Zebo mod then, called and Dark. So as we approach the aircraft, um, you know, the, the aircraft hasn't been touched. It's all completely dark. So as kind of fl operating flight crew, we'll decide amongst ourselves who's going to fly what sectors. And we'll split it in between pilot flying and the pilot monitoring. The pilot flying um, will do the setup uh, and the pre-flight. So I'm going to assume the pilot flying role um, today. And again, Zebo mode 737, cold and dark, X-Plane 11, uh, let's go. So as we approach the aircraft, um, just check that we've got chocks in place. Um, you know, if aircraft have, hasn't been parked for a little while, uh, sometimes hydraulic pressure and so on and the brakes tends to go. So it's important, yeah, just make sure you got the, the chocks. Um, have a good look around, anything that potentially could give us issues, ice and all that sort of thing, snow on the on the ground, fod, all that sort of thing. Get into the aircraft then um, and uh, we'll check our aircraft documents. For any of you that are maybe doing your CPL um, and uh, or hour building, if you're wondering about what aircraft documents you need, um, go check out the hour building app, uh, which is uh, kcthepilot.com forward slash hour um, building. Anyway, we come in, um, check the aircraft documents um, happy with that. So the first thing that we can then do is uh, the battery can't go on. Um, as the battery goes on, uh, we need to make sure the aircraft is safe. Um, hey, Dion. Hey, um, Ian. Uh, nice one. Cheers, guys. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, so put the battery on, make sure the aircraft uh, is safe. So make sure that the hydraulic um, switches are both off. I'm just getting the hang of x -Blade, so my view moving around isn't that perfect, but yeah, just uh, I'll try my best. Um, so yeah, hydraulic switches both off. I'll just go back to the original position I was I was in, and then we check the landing gear lever is down and that we have got six green lights, three on the roof, and then three on the top. Uh, I'll just cancel that to just stop some of the Christmas lights going off. Um, next up then, we've got ground power, so we'll put the ground power on. Um, and as we do that, we also make sure that the position light is in the right place as, uh, as well, just on there. So, and the position light basically alerts everyone that there's power uh, going to the aircraft. From there, uh, continuing on the, the flow then, um, the first thing that we need to do is just to make sure that the um, fire protection systems are working. So before we start up the APU or anything like that, 
Um, let's just try and move a bit further forward just to be able to see this properly. Cool. So yeah, we've got the overheat knob switch, it's wrong way. Uh, yeah, over, fault in op test, and we're looking for the fault and APU and op uh, lights over there, uh, which they are. And then at the top, would then just make sure that that the master caution is extinguished. Um, I think I might have pulled that script. Let's just put that back down. Cool. And then the next uh, thing that we're going to check is we're just going to do the fire test. We make sure that the engine overheat is illuminated. Uh, the three switches are on as well, and also the wheel well. And then if we come up onto there, uh, we can cancel the fire warning as um, as well. Um, so once we've done that, we're then good to put the APU on. We don't need the APU for now, though, because we've got ground power. So, yeah, that's um, that's all good. Uh, continuing on, then, with the flow. Do many of you guys uh, have, have this Zebo 737 mod, by the way? Um, yeah, drop me a comment. So, yeah, uh, we don't need the APU on. Um, so, then, continue on. We'll put the emergency exit lights on. We'll check the attendant uh button works we'll then come down and make sure that the flap position indicator uh is up and also agrees with um with uh with with, with what's going on down there so yeah that's absolutely spot on on there uh continuing uh on down we'll then do a full config test and uh, just make sure the um, config warning is working coming down it's then time to do check the cargo um uh cargo fire test. Uh, like that, just make sure both the extinguishers come on and then we get the three cargo fire warnings. And of course, that would also then illuminate on the top with the fire warning uh, there. Oh yeah, you absolutely love the Zebo. Do you know what, guys? I've just been so impressed with just how good uh, Zebo is. Uh, come down to the panel, we normally test the microphone which just sits in there. Um, we then check that that hatch is closed which has the manual gear extinguishing uh, switches. Uh, then moving on to, we'll just get rid of that, onto the FO side. So we'll check the panel, uh, the circuit breakers on the FO side, all the way up, all the way down. Make sure the fire extinguisher is in date. And then uh, we'll also check the emergency escape rope on, uh, on there. Coming back up to the overhead um, panel now. Uh, the deal then is uh, we'll then put, make sure the flight recorder is working. Uh, test it there. That goes off, that's fine. And then we'll check for the overspeed and you can hear the, the clackers as well. Uh, we'll then check the store warners. Is that gonna work for me? For the store warners, it has to be on uh, AC power for at least four minutes and I've just switched it on. So I'll come back to the to the store warners uh, on, on there. And then yeah, we can turn I'll just do that again. We can turn the IRSs on to a line, and then it's then back in to um, the seat to then start um, yeah the setup process. A couple more things here that we that we need to do before um, we go any further. Uh, just need to do the Christmas tree test. Let's see if they go, and then um, just make sure that all the lights are are working, uh, no bobs out or anything like that. Come all the way down, good look around, good scan all the way down, and then check all the way along the side and then along the pedestal. And make sure that's all on there. Uh, that can then go back to bright. And then we'll do a quick check of these lights as well. Just on that for the autopilot disconnect, auto throttle, and then also for the um, uh, FMC warnings on there. So that's basically the preliminary um, check, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, now the next step is right getting set up. So from here, the first thing you really do uh, to allow you to get going, um, enter IRS heading call. Come back to that. Uh, is nav. Um, data update, cool, we'll update that, um, is would need to get the ATIS. So we're just gonna assume that we have got the ATIS already and we can go ahead and start to set up the, um, the APHIS panel. Um, so basically starting from the top basically and working our way down. So the first thing uh, that we're gonna um, select is uh, just put that to Barrow and we're gonna set, just put a placeholder in for our uh, 
flat retraction, uh, sorry, um, so for, yeah, for a flat retraction altitude, uh, our MFRA, if we have to have an engine failure. Manchester sits around about 250 feet above the ground, which is where we're at, and we normally set it to roughly 1,000 feet above the ground. And we'll come back and refine that once, we, um, once we've done the performance on there. We're in the UK, in Europe, so we'll also set hectopascals, and just for ease of today, we'll also set 1013. Um, in terms of uh, other settings, we'll make sure we've got terrain uh, selected on the on the PFD. Um, sorry, on the NND, and then uh, select the airports stations. Up to you, but fine. We'll keep it um, all in there, and then we will come on down on here. Uh, just make sure all this is looking sensible. The time is showing UTC, which it is, and uh, yeah, everything's all looking sensible. A couple of things that I forgot to do earlier actually was just to test the oxygen mask as uh, as well. If anyone's got any questions, guys, by the way, please um, please do fire um, away. So that's basically all the. Um, uh, initial setup. The next step now is to then have a look at uh, setting up the FMC. Do you know with the Zebo Mod 737? I've just been. I can't believe like how much the stuff has absolutely come along. I mean, to have like a working EFB and all that. I, I came from flights in '95, and this is just yeah. This is just the work of a. This is just the work of dreams. Um, so uh, what did I do then? Um, I actually planned a flight earlier using uh, Simbrief. Um, so if I just go into that uh, charts. Um, and uh, the, the flight plan actually is... Yeah, it's, it's available in, in, in Simbrief, which is just absolutely mental. I, I just can't believe um, how good it is. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, I've just, I'll just drag it out and then we'll, um, we'll just uh, use it to help us set up the, uh, the FMC together. Uh, zoom into there, cool. Um, so yeah, straight into the FMC then. Um, I've... Uh, Updated the navigation database, but it's only going up to the end of uh, November uh, at the sorry, at the end of January uh, for whatever reason. So hopefully on the next stream I'll get that updated um, in there. For the IRSs, then the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the IRSs where they are. So we go on to page two on the FMC page and then uh, pick up the GPS and then put that in there. And uh, we're then in a good place then now to start setting up the the route. So with the flight plan I created um, earlier, uh, we're going from uh, Manchester uh, EGCC, and uh, the flight is taking us to Alicante. When we had the discussion of who's going to be pilot flying, pilot monitoring, would have looked at this, also looked at the weather, and uh, um, and then gone from there. I just seen a question from me: Do you have navigation or something similar added to Zebo? I don't have access to any charts on my side app. I just downloaded the Simbri from my iPad. Yeah, that's a good point, Ian. Um, so I actually uh, got the Navigraph subscription. Um, I think it's they give you an option if you just want uh, the FMC or the charts. I think it's about eight eight euros a month. Um, so that just allows. Um, yeah, all the charts to, to load up on there. Um, it's all in the description, by the way. I think it is. If not, I'll update it uh, in any case for the, uh, once I'm done on the video uh, on there. But yeah, good question. Uh, so the flight number is, um, you bet you guessed it, KC100. Um, we'll put that in. And our departure today is going to be from, I'll just check and see what they've planned us for, is uh, I'm pretty sure it's 23 right. Yeah, it is uh, two three right, so we can go ahead and put uh, two three right in in there straight away. Uh, we then move on to the next page, and then it's just then entering uh, the rest of the details. So into the departures arrival page, uh, select the departure. It's going to be runway two three right, and uh, we're expecting the Samba one Romeo. Uh, that's all on there, guys. Anyone have any questions? Please do uh, ask away. Um, I'll try my best to. To answer them, uh, it doesn't have to be just be about sim. Happy to answer any of the flight training questions too. Um, Samba, and then we're going to November eight five nine. Hunley, Upper November eight five nine, and it is then onto Balan. 
So all I'm doing, guys, is just lifting the route um, that I'd pre-planned from SimBrief and then uh, putting it into the FMC. There is some automation that you can get to load it directly into the FMC, uh, but just for the purposes of this video, I've just wanted to just go step by step and uh, and uh, show you guys. And then onwards to uh, Macox, we've got on there, and then upper November eight six zero. into Valencia and then uh, it's then the Valencia 3 uh, November arrival into Alicante it's going to be VR Zulu for runway 28 um, and then I'll just select the Valencia 3 November arrival and it's normally via Bessor so we can go back into there and then we can now activate um, activate uh, the FMC so that's all in there eventually once the IRS's do catch up uh, the route will then be displayed on there but normally take about 10 minutes something uh, like that so we can then continue then um, with the initial setup for the performance now so um, Depending on your airline, your company, what you'd normally use is you'd use a flight plan to do your initials. And then once you get the load sheet and finalize your figures, you could then uh, update it. So the first uh, item that we're going to take um, is uh, going to be the estimated uh, zero fuel weight. So we've got the maximum uh, and the estimated uh, on there. And uh, it's uh, 59,096. So we just rounded up to 59.1. Uh, and uh, that's loaded into. So yeah, the IRS is of a line now, and we've just got the route that's just popped up on the FMC. Um, for the reserves, for how the flight plan's done, basically we need um, to, to get to Palma Mallorca, which is our, our alternate, we need uh, 1.8 basically, and then we also need our final reserves, which is uh, 30 minutes basically. Um, so we need to add these two together, so that will give us 1.8 plus 1.1. So let's call it uh, 2.9, let's round it up to 3 tons um, for the reserve. Um, are you, yeah, good question, Ian. Are you given your SID before departure and you program it or are you sometimes given it in the air? So the SID is, uh, initially we get it on the flight plan and then it's then later confirmed uh, once we get the clearance with air traffic control. Um, so most of the time it's all, it's, it's all right, but, you know, um, <laughs> good old TCAF, absolutely. Um, yeah, so most of the time it's uh, it's it's as per the flight plan, but occasionally uh, maybe the flight plan's done previously, uh, maybe when the weather was slightly different than forecast, so one we may have changed, or uh, for traffic, so, stuff like that, it might be sli slightly different. And then the cost index, uh, what cost index have we got today? Cost index of 50 or 59. Uh, for those of you guys, I'm not sure how familiar or not you are, but the cost index basically decides how fast the airplane is going to fly. Cost index zero means the airplane is programmed to fly as economically as possible. Cost index 100 is fly as fast as possible, not so uh, interested in the fuel burn. So 59 is probably like, yeah, 59% quick, which is which is okay. Different companies use different um, cost indexes, just depending on what kind of operational requirements there are. So I've then entered uh, the cruise level. It's uh, three five zero uh, initially it uh, hasn't got a step today but once we get going um, if we do need the step uh, then we can always ask for it from ATC hi to everyone who's just joined uh, recently thanks for coming on um, make sure to check out description uh, if you've got any aspirations of uh, flying or taking up your PPL whatever kcthepilot.com for all my blog and uh, and all that sort of info on um, on there um, the next one that we need to put in is uh, going to be the cruise wind. So that's going to be 253 slash 058. Um, just, pilot said, good question. Do airlines decide uh, the cost index? Yeah, they do. Uh, so it's basically an operational uh, number. Um, cost index zero is uh, the aircraft is to be flown as economically as possible uh, using the least amount of fuel. Cost index 100 is as fast as possible. So if you fly as slowly as possible, um, it's fine. You save money on fuel, but you have higher staffing costs, for example. But if you fly cost index 100, you'll probably uh, spend more on fuel, but you'll have lower. So it's kind of finding the balance. Um, top of climb ISO then is uh, minus three. So we'll just put that in as uh, minus uh, 
sorry, acid deviation is minus three. And then uh, for the transition altitude, here in Manchester, it's 5,000 feet. But for um, reasons which, which I'll tell you why shortly, we'll just put 5,001 inside the FMC. The reason I put 5,001 is we've got a stop altitude of 5,000 feet. So if I keep it as 5,000 inside the FMC, it will read as flight level 70. Whereas if I put 5,001, it will keep it as uh, 5,000 feet in there. Always enter the M1 limit page. Uh, we'll select flaps um, uh, 40, oh, sorry, uh, it's 14 degrees OAT. That's fine. And then um, we'll come back and do the rest of uh, the performance once we're, um, once we, once we're there. Ch Charlie, is this just a second? No, uh, so this is actually uh, a tutorial, complete cold and dark, all the way pushing back uh, an engine start. It will take a little while, so I'll follow on in future videos with more actual fly, but I just wanted to focus on specifically cold and dark, pre-flight prep, um, getting set up, and um, and all uh, and all that's involved there. So that's basically as far as we can, um, we can go uh, inside the FMC. Um, the next step now is to then complete the, if you like, the setup with the overhead head panel and so on and just get that all configured so starting from the top this is a flow now so it kind of works well make sure um all these switches are in uh the flight control standby hydraulics uh, spoilers and all these are uh, off uh we'll make sure that the navigation um uh just uh displays are on all on normal uh displays on auto and uh we'll also and now the fuel pumps can go on quick glance uh, there we've got 1.7 tons of the center tank so we can put the center tank pumps on uh, at this point we'll also test the cross fields so cross feed valve so make sure this goes dim blue uh, bright blue dim blue it is and then bring it back uh, to make sure that if we did need to cross feed or fuel balance in flight it's uh, completely um, completely fine on um, there taking on all the way down Kelly TLT IFE passenger seats on uh, make sure these are all on we're still on the ground power for now um, uh, all these are normal fasten belts on we'll assume the refueling is complete now so the fasten belt si uh, s signs can go on uh, window heat switches can also all uh, come on probably be configured on uh, taxi and um, for the walk around would normally have put the electric hydraulic pumps on as well uh, so we'll put them on now as well uh, whilst w w as I've just put them on uh, one thing that we'll just check is uh, just go back into my seat on there is to just check the uh hydraulic pressure levels um yeah it's uh 2840 2810 so yeah that's within the realms of uh common sense what we're allowed to dispatch with um we then check the pressurization system so zero differential uh cabin altitude showing roughly what the airfield elevation and no rate of uh climb uh continuing then upwards now uh to the uh, pressurization air condition kit trim air can come on the packs can go to auto um, and uh, that's all good we'll then set the um, cruise panel so cruise altitude today is going to be 350 and uh, we'll set 150 feet for Alicante make sure that's all in auto uh, the lights can remain where they are and we'll just assume that at this point uh, boarding has been completed so we can start to get the APU uh, going as well then coming on now um, to the uh, MC, MCP panel, um, one of the things that we're going to do is to set it up ready for our, um, our departure. Um, so initially we'll come back and do, and do the brief, but uh, for now um, we need to put something in there. So um, it's going to be the Samba 1 Romeo departure, which we're expecting. Um, so I'll just come across here onto the M MCP and then we'll set it up um, the MCP so basically two things one uh, if we had a uh, loss of the FMCs we could con continue uh, conventionally and also um, just to capture the initial clearance uh, limits that we've uh, that we that we've got for ourselves so um, Initially, then, um, what we got here uh, for the Samba 1 Romeo, then, um, check the plates, 2nd November 18, 10-3K, uh, transition altitude's 5,000 feet, I want us to contact Scottish, that's all good. Um, so, for the initial uh, departure, then, um, for the autopilot, I'll, I'll do a separate tutorial on, like, how the autopilot works uh, and, and, and so on, but for the initial heading for the Samba departure, 
what they want us to do is to climb straight ahead on the runway heading. Runway heading is 232, which I've got set on there. And they want us to make a right turn to 274. Um, so as a aid memoir, I'll put in 274 on, um, on, on, uh, on the course selector on there. And again, it's just if you have a complete autopilot failure, what are you going to do and how are you going to fly the airplane? And then now... Uh, Turn left to Tabli to intercept uh, the radial uh, 334 uh, inbound uh, to Honley. So then I'd set, because I'm going to assume that I'm going to be flying uh, as a first officer, I'll do it from the captain's seat. I'll then put in uh, 334 on that side. And then I'll also set the... Nav 2 radio, uh, so what have we got in there uh, with the radio frequencies that we want? So 11355 uh, is for uh, Manchester, and then uh, in here we've got 11365, uh, which is uh, then for Honley. And then uh, we can just make sure that we've got my Charlie Tango on there. So yeah, if we have a complete failure, um, uh, of the systems, then yeah, we, we're completely fine. Uh, it's it's okay, we can continue to fly it. So good question, why do we need to set a specific landing out in the pressurization section uh, for KC? So um, the pressurization controller is will actually um, manage the cabin altitude for us uh, automatically, but it just needs to know what the cruise is and what the landing altitude is. Um, so for example, you might be going somewhere that's, you know, although Alicante is 150 feet, you might be landing somewhere that's 2,000 feet above sea level. You don't want the controller to land with 2,000 feet of cabin altitude because you won't be depressurized, the doors won't be able to open. So that just allows you to, um, yeah, it basically programs the, the automatic controller of uh, how and um, what to what to do. Um, so with um, the MCP then set up, uh, we'll then put the flight directors, um, pilot flying has it master on their side. And then um, you'll notice I put 5,001, that's the stop altitude, uh, is 5,000 in Manchester. And once we get the clearance, uh, we'll assume we have got the clearance now, we can then set 5,000. Some airlines do things differently, some might set 100 below. It's just a nice sort of way of uh, remembering kind of uh, where you're at. Coming then down, we'll make sure that uh, this is an auto, these two are an auto, and we can set the auto brake uh, to RTO. Uh, check that there's been no exceedances of any of the engine parameters. Um, on there, it, it all looks um, fine, and um, at the same time, I'll just click that off. Uh, we can then also reset the uh, the fuel gauges. Cool, that's all there, and then just make sure everything's all zero and uh, looks all right and uh, looking uh, good. Um, so then, continuing uh, down, make sure the prop brakes set, stop and credit switches on the positions, uh, leave us a cutoff. We'd also do another takeoff config check here, um, that's completely fine on there. Excuse me, whilst I move the trim wheel around, and then coming down, um, just make sure the transponder is set with whatever squawk we have uh, is in standby, and um, the uh, aileron and rudder trims are both on uh, on zero, if I can uh, get there. So yeah, that's all on zero. You just do a quick check of both sides. And again, we'll just make sure that the aileron, uh, well, with my dodgy um, joystick, it's not quite zero, but you get the, you get the point anyway. So um, at this point, we're basically all done. Uh, First officer's come back uh, from the walk around, everything's happy, refueling's complete. Uh, so then we'll then go ahead and um, do our briefing. A um, couple of things that uh, might just want to consider uh, for the uh, what kind of things you'd uh, include in the briefing. Um, I'll just uh, pull up the uh, Manchester chart on there. So you'd go through um, stuff like uh, any issues that potentially expecting, maybe de-icing, uh, just cover any threats that you've got. Um, you then look at uh, just making sure everything's set up correctly, instruments are all set up, uh, depending on your company, um, 
you know, one of the guys I like to follow on Instagram is uh, Pilot Obit, and I like his instrument check. It includes, it involves uh, the uh, both pilots reading what their heading is against the standby compass. The different companies do different things. Uh, you check your instruments. Um, then just talk about the kind of departure that you're flying. Is it NADP1, NADP2, uh, those kind of quirkiness. You then also talk about the taxi. So presently, we're just parked on stand 53. Um, we're going to be going off 2 3 right. So yeah, pretty pretty standard pushing back uh probably facing the west something like that for the pushback or maybe east i don't know uh whichever will work and then um we'll then come up to uh the briefing for the said and both pilots will basically go through line by line um and make sure that the fmc is programmed to do what uh what they're what they're what they're what they're expecting us so in this case basically they want us to climb uh, straight ahead um and at three mike charlie tango so egcc two three right that's fine and then at three mike charlie tango we've got that that all checks two seven four two seven three we've got that and then uh, continuing on to tabli and um uh, make sure that we've got the height restrictions in there and then we've also got the stop altitude 5000 set at samba so yeah that's basically what uh, depending on your company that's the main element of um of the brief uh, that will be covered um that'll be covered on uh, on there uh, the next thing that we're going to do now is to then go through and uh, do the do the checklist so i am uh, uh new to this uh, let's see how that works so we'll go through um and uh, we can just do this uh, together. Um, I've gone through anyway, and, and pretty happy. Yeah, that was uh, very switch we've checked. But as you do each of these, as you challenge them, you'd look up and check that they've been done uh, correctly. Uh, one of depending on your company, how the procedures work. Some will be challenge and response. Some will be that you answer together. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, later pilot on that. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll basically go through that. So we'll assume that um, all the checklists are complete. We have got the clearance um, and uh, everybody is all well and happy. Oh, just uh, one thing to mention. Occasionally, um, you might have uh, one of the scenarios that would need to brief is uh, what would do in case of an engine failure. And Manchester terrain is not an issue so we would um probably plan to just go uh what does it look like there um so we got what worst case msa within 25 miles three and a half thousand feet so we'll probably plan to do something like go straight ahead to four thousand feet um figure out what the issue is uh and then continue from there but just uh, in terms of planning again you're just trying to minimize the workload uh that you've got to do you probably put a 25 mile uh ring in to your FMC. And again, that will just give us a nice little picture when we're approaching the 25 mile ring, which is basically the protected area for the MSA. Um, yeah, just to just to go from from there. So um, if he's on, dispatcher has now turned up with the, uh, oh, I lie, I didn't put the APU on. Let's try again. Um, APU's uh, going on, well, whilst we're waiting for the APU to uh, come up, uh, we can then look at our performance. Um, what I did is, uh, before this, I actually just pre-populated some of the items, uh, just so we didn't um, yeah, have to spend ages on it. I've put the payload in, I've put what the zero fuel weight in, I've put what the passenger's in, and this is just going with what the dispatcher would have brought us um, for the load sheet-wise. Um, and yeah, it's all looking um, pretty pretty good on uh, there so yeah no issues on that we then come back and uh, if we look at the takeoff uh, performance from there this opt on on zebo uh isn't actually um working yet but you you get the point you put the the departure airport you put the runway that we're on uh be two three right wind whatever conditions what your takeoff weight is and then that would then give you a takeoff uh thrust setting but we can't um obviously do that so what we're just going to have to do is just use the figures uh, from the mass and balance and use the FMC figures for the purposes of uh, this um, this uh, this exercise. Right, let's see if this is going to let me go back into that. Uh, right, I'll just close that. So for the zero fuel weight, it's uh, 53.4 and a CG of 23.9. So going back into the FMC, both pilots would do this uh, cross-checking together. Um, so... 
down in a few fat passengers, 53.4 against our estimated uh, 59. Uh, we're happy of the reasons why. So we could then, so let me just slide across into that. We're happy with why that is. Um, Just trying to get my view to come across, right? Is that going to work? 53.9, I'll tell you what, I'll put it in on that side. Just going to execute that. Uh, 53.9 into there, and uh, that gives us a gross rate of 63 tons. We'll execute that, and then onwards to the performance page. Um, so because we haven't done the OPT, uh, it's um yeah we'll we'll just use the FMC figures um so with the twenty two k derated um with an assumed temperature it will probably be okay with us uh, going ahead and and uh, and doing that so yeah that's completely fine we'll go with twenty two k um absolutely I couldn't believe uh, when I looked at this I I saw the PDMG on the seven three seven how much I paid and this is all free it's just absolutely unreal and anyway, moving on to the takeoff page uh, we'll put in our flaps. Just move that out of the way. Flaps five and uh, with our CG of 23.9, um, gives us a trim of 5.5. Five. Uh, we can then go ahead and uh, set 5.5 on there. We can expect, accept the speeds. We want 136. We are 136 and a V2 of 144, uh, which is all set. On, uh, on there. So yeah, um, all good there, guys. It's uh, yeah, that's pretty much the the full setup. Um, so at this stage, we've then basically all done, all suited and booted. APUs come online now. We can put it onto the buses, uh, and uh, the ground staff can then disconnect uh, the ground power. I'm just going to click off that. Uh, the ground services can be disconnected. So yeah, GPU can be disconnected and the chocks can be uh, removed. At this stage, uh, we'll then complete the um, before start checklist. Uh, we'll assume that's all been done. We'll get the push and start clearance. Again, assume that's uh, that's all been done. And then it's now a case of uh, getting uh, the pushback truck, uh, assuming that we've got um, the clearance. Right, I'm just gonna quickly plan out something for us so if we have it it's going to about there and then in fact if we position ourselves something like that and then further there ground to cockpit plan acknowledge call me through the menu when you're ready cool so just waiting for the pushback truck to arrive uh should be there in a minute um in fact i'm just gonna Yeah, should be there, um, coming up shortly. Uh, we'll do the the checks and um, all that for the final before start checks. And then, yeah, it's just a case of getting ready to go. So pilot flying on this page would have the uh, performance page, varies by company, and then um, pilot monitoring would then have uh, the legs page on the other side. I'll just ex execute that as well, uh, just to make sure that that is all on, um, all on there. Uh, so yeah, we can, connect up the tug and then uh, yeah we can uh, get our clearance and then uh, start the push just waiting for the tug to arrive and we'll be good to go cool um oh nice one there there charlie yeah cool i, I would have been here all day driving up <laughs> so he's, he's just told me I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm being too impatient. But yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, that's that's pretty much it there for the cold and dark um, setup. Uh, what are your thoughts so far? And are you finding it? What What do you think? Um, I just can't believe how good um, yeah Zebo is to to give all this stuff for for basically for free. Yeah, it's just absolutely absolutely unreal.
Cool. Can see the truck driver coming up now. Um, so we'll assume uh, we'll get the clearance. Uh, requesting push and start. Casey, one hundred. Push and start approved. Um, so on that case, I'm just going to put the APU bleed in so uh, we can have uh, start the engines. I'll turn their packs off. Okay. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Packs are off. Uh, they can connect up now. Um, packs are off. Anti collision light can go on. Park brake is set, and the transponder would now go to alt off, uh, which is all on there. Uh, master caution. Cool. Uh, we can cancel that. Um, Cool. As the truck's connecting, um, yeah. So that's basically it for the sort of um, starting up bit. Um, it takes quite a while, as you as you see. Connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Cool. Uh, so we'll release the brakes now. The time is starting pushback, and you may start engines. Minute one four three three. Um, so initially, before the engines start. Um, uh, so initially, before the engine start, we'll just make sure that we are away uh, from sort of the terminal and baggage carts and stuff like that. And just to conserve fuel and manage our fuel, we want to time our start so the uh, engine start finishes when the pushback finishes. Yeah, absolutely. And it does take around about half an hour or so to go for the complete setup. Um, so all clear now. It's looking all right. Um, uh, we can then start engine number two. Uh, FO check, it's clear on the right and uh, would go in the wrong way. Uh, push the start switches to ground mode. Start valve opens and uh, we've got N2 just coming on there. At the same time, just keeping a lookout outside, just making sure if there's a signal or anything like that. Uh, maybe we have a hot start or anything like that or a tailpipe fire. Um, we can catch it. Coming up to uh, 20%, we're looking for 25%, we've got N1 now, EGT is increasing, uh, start lever can go up, and then we just make sure um, that that light is extinguished, it has, and then now just keeping an eye on the EGTs as it rising. Engine's coming up nicely, um, I hate the pushback on x -Lane. To be honest, it's, I think it's absolutely fantastic for, for what it is. Um, Next marker we're looking for is about 57%. Uh, we should get a click. We've got the click, starter cut out, and the starter valve has gone out. We've got a good start on engine number two. We're looking for two, four, um, six, and roughly three. That's on there. We'll start engine number one. So, and two we have, and then looking for the EGT. At the same time, um, We'll just keep our eye on the EGTs, just make sure we don't get a hot star or anything like that. Approaching 18%. M1 we have. Pick up the start lever into idle. And then quick glance above. Just make sure these lights have both gone out. They have. And then back down to monitor the start sequence. And start switches is just clicked off. Starter cutout lights gone on. Cool. And uh, we've got two, four, six, three. All looking good on there. So with that, we can then um, put both the engines on the buses. And uh, we are done with the APU. If I can actually click it. I need more practice, guys. <laughs> right, cool. APU's gone off, uh, uh, gone off now. And um, yeah, the pushback is just coming to the end. So yeah, all looking good. And uh, from here, we'll just wait until uh, the pushback truck is gone and everyone's uh, away from the aircraft before we start doing uh, the other bits and uh, pieces. Quite a nice day in Manchester, actually. I can't believe just how much functionality is an is an explain uh from the days that i was yeah started off uh, with flights and it's just complete set 
parking brake. Cool. So, pop brake is set now. Disconnecting and toes. Stand by. Cool. We'll just wait for them to disconnect and go, and then we can uh, then move over uh, onwards to the to the next uh, next flow. Yeah, so on the next streams, um, cool, that you can go. I'll get a that sim and we'll actually do a proper flight. But for today, the whole point of it was to just show what the Zebo Mod 737 is like uh, for the cold and dark. Um, so with them disconnected, we'll be expecting a signal somewhere on the left. Uh, they'll be driving off very shortly. And then... Um, so it's disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Pan signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Okay. Nice one. So just looking out for them on the left now. There they are. There's, there goes the tug. Um, we don't have a bar this time. Uh, we're looking for the man to get out or the lady get out with the pin. Uh, give us a wave. And then um, go from there. Right, cool. Uh, so we've got everything on there. So then come back uh, to the overhead panel. Put the start switches in continuous. Uh, can I find the bits and bobs that we need? Probably switches to on. Uh, reconfigure the air conditioning system. I'd call that, actually. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's all on there. Come back across. Just make sure everything's all right in the MCP. Continuing on all the way down. And then we want the uh, flaps. To come down. So whilst the flaps are just having a little think about coming down. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, it, the next step is then the flight control check. So, yeah, once the flight control check is done, it will then be before taxi checks. And, um, uh, yeah, and then off you go. Um, cool question here uh, from Laura. Um, and I uh, really want to become a pilot, uh, but I'm 4'11". Uh, would that stop me? Um, yeah. That's a really good question. I don't think so. It shouldn't do. As long as you can reach the controls and stuff, yeah, it should be absolutely fine. Question for me, I would love to see some departures and arrival streams next time. Struggling a bit, programming and uh, managing climbing descent. Ian, absolutely. Um, today was just, uh, yes, yeah, just give you a zebo, a run out with a cold and dark for the first tutorial. Uh, we've done that pretty happy. Um, so, yeah, next one I will certainly do so. Um, uh, go from there. Guys, thank you so much uh, for for watching. Um, as I said, yeah, I just wanted to give the Zebo Mod 73 seven cold and dark tutorial for everyone to see um thanks for your absolutely fantastic uh questions and um yeah it's uh it's, it's been great to have you looking forward to the next streams when we go flying um with that sim and and so on guys all right everyone cheers thank you